Hello and welcome to my channel Pharmacy in Depth where we will talk about pharmacy related topics in detail. So today's topic is gastro retentive drug delivery systems. So come let's see what are these systems, why these systems, what are different types of these systems and what are their industrial applications. So let's start the video. These systems are control release drug delivery systems which are retained in the stomach for prolonged duration. The dissolved drug is released and absorbed through the absorption window which is usually the upper GI tract. So now let's see why this system. So this system is best suited for drugs which are locally active in stomach for example antiacids or antibiotics against H. pylori. For drugs which have absorption window in stomach or upper GIT like levodopa or furosemides. For drugs which are unstable at intestinal pH like captopril. The drugs which affect or alter the normal flora of intestine like many antibiotics and drugs which are poorly soluble at alkaline pH like dizepam and verapamil. Let's see various advantages of this method. It improves drug absorption because of increased gastric resistance and hence increase the bioavailability. It is used for controlled drug delivery. It is used for delivery of drugs which are locally acting in the stomach. It minimizes mucosal irritation by releasing the drug at a slow control rate. It is used for treatment of GI disorders such as gastroesophageal reflux and it eases the administration which improves the patient compliance. But these systems have certain limitations like they require high volume of fluid in the stomach for the system to remain buoyant. Floating systems are not feasible for drugs that have solubility or stability problem at gastric fluid. Drugs which are well absorbed at the entire GI tract may not be the desired candidate for the drugs since they slow the gastric emptying and may lead to reduced systemic bioavailability. And also the drugs that are irritant to gastric mucosa are not suitable for this system. To understand this system, let's first understand our gastrointestinal dynamics. The process of gastric emptying is characterized by an interdigestive motility pattern which is called migrating motor complex. It is divided into four phases. The first phase is called the basal phase which is characterized by lack of any secretory or electrical activity. The second phase which is called the pre-burst phase. In this phase, there is high contraction force and the bile enters the duodenum and gastric mucus discharges. The third phase is called the burst phase where a large and regular contraction takes place and sweeps the undigested food which is also called housekeeper waves. And the last phase is called the transition phase which is the transition between the third and the first phase. Now let's look at some factors which affect the gastric retention. The density of the product should be less than 1 gram per centimeter cube to remain buoyant on the gastric fluid. The shape should be ring and tetrahedron and its size should be more than 7.5 mm in diameter. Presence of food in the stomach increases the gastric retention time. Females have a slower gastric emptying rate than males. Elderly have also slower gastric emptying rate. And GET increases by 4 to 10 hours with high protein and fat meal. Coming to types. There are basically four types of these systems, floating system, swelling system, high density system and mucoridation systems. So let's see each system in detail. The first system, floating type. In these types of system, the dosage form has a bulk density less than that of gastric fluid so that it can remain buoyant over the gastric fluid. They are divided into non-effervescent and effervescent systems. And non-effervescent systems like hydrodynamically balanced system, collateral gel barrier system, alginate beads and hollow microspheres. And effervescent systems like microporous compartment, volatile liquid containing system, intragastric osmotically active system and gas generating systems. Going to the first type of non-effervescent system which is hydrodynamically balanced system. It is a capsule in which drug is filled with hydrochlorides such as HPMC or HEC. Upon administration, the outer shell of the capsule dissolves and the mixture swells and forms a gelatinous barrier thereby remaining buoyant in the gastric juice for extended period of time. The second type which is colloidal gel barrier system, it is in form of a tablet. The drug is mixed with gel forming colloids and upon contact with the gastric fluid, hydrocolloids gel hydrates and forms a gel barrier which controls the drug release. The air entrapped in the polymer helps to maintain the buoyancy. It can also be made as a bilayer tablet where the immediate release layer delivers the initial dose rapidly and the sustained release layer absorbs the gastric fluids and form colloidal gel barrier which controls the drug release and maintains the buoyancy for extended period of time. The third system is alginate beads. 
where a solution of sodium alginate is dropped onto the aqueous solution of calcium chloride to form calcium alginate beads. These beads have a diameter of 2.5 mm. They are freeze dried in liquid nitrogen at a temperature of minus 40 degrees Celsius for 24 hours and these form porous systems which maintain the floating time for 12 hours. The last type under non effervescent system is hollow microspheres in which an oil and water emulsion is prepared by addition of drug and polymer in organic solvents of ethanol and dichloromethane and polymer PVA in aqueous solution. The ethanol partitions into the external aqueous phase and the polymer precipitates around the methylene chloride droplets. The subsequent evaporation of the entrapped methylene chloride leads to the formation of internal cavity within the microsphere. Now let's see the second type of floating system which is the effervescent system. These are drug delivery systems which are made to float by incorporating a floating chamber which may be filled with vacuum, air or inert gas. The gas in the floating chamber can be introduced either by volatilization of organic solvent or by effervescent reaction between organic acids and bicarbonate salts. The first type of effervescent system is microporous compartment system. In this, the drug reservoir is encapsulated in a microporous compartment having pores along its top and bottom surface. The peripheral wall of the drug reservoir compartment is completely sealed to prevent any physical contact of unresolved drug with the stomach wall. Entrapped air in the flotation chamber causes the system to float in the gastric fluid. The second system is volatile liquid containing system. It consists of two chambers separated by an impermeable pressure responsive movable bladder. The first chamber consists of the drug and the second chamber consists of a volatile liquid which is mostly ether that gasifies at body temperature. Upon administration, the device inflates and releases the drug and after a prolonged duration, the biodegradable polymer degrades, the chamber deflates, the system sinks down the stomach and is excreted from the body. The fourth type which is intragastric osmotically controlled system. This system consists of an inflatable floating support which consists of a liquid that gasifies at body temperature which is usually ether. A semi permeable coating consisting of an osmotically active agent, a drug reservoir and a delivery orifice at one end. Upon administration, the liquid volatilizes and the system floats on the gastric component. The water gets absorbed through the semi permeable membrane into the osmotic compartment which develops osmotic pressure and forces the drug out of the reservoir through the delivery orifice. The fifth and the last type which is the gas generating system. This consists of a sustained release drug core which is surrounded by a layer of sodium bicarbonate and tartaric acid and an outer layer of swellable membrane. Upon administration, effervescent reaction takes place between carbonate and tartaric acid to liberate CO2 which gets entrapped in the jellified layer of membrane which helps it to float over the gastric content. Till now we have discussed all the floating types. Now let's come to the second type which are swellable systems. This system consists of a drug reservoir which is surrounded by a highly swellable expandable polymer. These systems swell to an extent that prevents their exit from the stomach through the pylorus. Third system which are high density system. These systems have a density of around 2.5 gram per centimeter cube. In this system drug is mixed with excipients with high density for example barium sulfate, zinc oxide, iron oxide and titanium dioxide. These systems are exactly opposite to floating systems. And the fourth system, mucoadhesive systems. In this system, drug is mixed with mucoadhesive polymers like chitosan, polyacrylic acid, carbopol, and SPMC. These systems get adhered to the wall of the stomach. Apart from these four systems, there are some miscellaneous systems also, like raft forming system, where a viscous cohesive gel-like structure called raft is formed over the gastric content. This is used for drugs like antiacids and for conditions like gastroesophageal reflux. The expandable system, which includes unfolding and swellable system, it consists of a drug-loaded biodegradable polymer which is folded and inserted in carrier like a capsule. Upon administration, the capsule dissolves and this system expands to such an extent that helps in retention of these systems. These come in different types like four lobed disc, four limb cross ring, and tetrahedro. Super porous hydrogels and magnetic systems. 
In this system, drug is incorporated along with an internal magnet and an external magnet is placed over the stomach to retain the system at that place. Here we can see different marketed preparations made by using these techniques. So guys this was all about GRDDS, thanks for watching, I really hope you liked my video and if you did, like it, share it and subscribe to my channel.